Warning, this video may contain scenes that are disturbing to people who don't know about sound forest management practices. The point of this video is clear and simple. Controlled annual burning prevents devastating, catastrophic, out of control wildfires. Today on the farm, we're burning the woods off. We burn our pine trees every February. It's important to burn your pine trees every, every February. You want to do it then specifically because the sap is low in the trees and they can tolerate the heat from the fire. If you burn them during the summer when the sap is high, the fire will actually kill the trees. So every February, which is our coldest month of the year typically, we like to burn the pine trees. And the reason that we burn them is to get rid of uh, all the undergrowth. So you see over here where the fire hasn't traveled yet, we got a lot of undergrowth. That stuff competes with the pine trees and slows their growth. If you can keep it relatively clean, the pine trees will grow faster. The other reason, and the, a big reason why we burn the pine trees every year is if you don't burn them, you leave a lot of fuel on the ground. So if you don't burn them, you get more and more pine straw building up, more pine cones, more limbs, more sticks, and all that stuff is just fuel. So if a fire accidentally breaks out, then your forest burns down. So you have to do what we call control burns every year. At most, we will go maybe every other year sometimes, but we really try to burn every year in the pine trees and we like to do it in February. So it's February and it's burn time. Before we just go and light the woods on fire, Daddy comes in here, he's got a offset hair, he pulls behind a D6 dozier and he cuts these fire breaks all around the woods section off into small manageable sections that way the fire doesn't jump out and go where it's not supposed to go or it doesn't get to going on too big of a track and just get out of hand we keep the section small this is a little small section right here right in my driveway uh, they lit this section earlier you see it's burned across here just got one little small line of flames down here on the bottom side still working its way through You can come in here after a, a burn like this and find the deer antlers really easy. The deer are shedding their antlers right now around here. I, I started picking the first ones up maybe uh, two weeks ago. And so they're dropping right now. And you run this little fire through here, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. This particular little stretch right here is right in front of my house. I usually burn it last week of January every year. I think I missed last year. And so you see there's a lot of uh, a lot of oak leaves, a lot of pine straw down here. Important that we burn all that fuel up because we don't want a bunch of fuel on the ground. You see, I also have this what we call love grass planted in here. As long as we keep a, a, a yearly burn regiment, that love grass multiplies and this whole area be solid with this love grass. The quail, the wild quail will nest and bed up in that. Makes really good habitat for them. But you see I missed last year and there's not a lot of the love grass left out here. All the pine straw and leaves will choke it out and smother it. So you, if you burn and remove all that pine straw and leaves every year, the love grass actually multiplies and it increases our natural quail habitat. Also there are uh, some wire grass varieties that grow out here. And, different other natural things that are really good for the turkeys and the quail and so if we maintain a yearly burn we're actually helping wildlife not hurting it so this is what we do this area here is a uh, little thicket of hardwoods so it doesn't get burned as periodically as our pine trees do this area the deer like to use it during the middle of the day they'll hang out in here it's nice and shady super thick hardwood brush so they can hide in here and feel pretty comfortable but you'll notice that the fire is a little hotter in here because as i said this area doesn't get burned nearly as frequently as the pine trees do so there's more fuel on the ground thus when you light a match in here the fire gets a little bit hotter still not going to be a big big deal though we're going to it's it's done pretty well in here it's cleaned up well if it gets too hot, you'll see it start to go up the trees, and that's when we got a problem. I'm not seeing anything going up in the trees. We're just uh, maintaining a good undergrowth cleanup fire at this point.
you see all this area has already burned as the fire travels very slowly across the woods here they've lit in the back fire what is burning back to it so they're going to meet here and they're burning towards each other the uh, other side of that flame over there is already burnt those woods are already burnt so this is a little back fire burning back to this one to keep it keep it from getting out of hand they always as we burn the woods we always like back fires and we burn back to where we've already burned instead of just like the matching one end of property and letting the fire haul butt all the way across the property it'll be out of control by the time it gets to the other side so we we burn a light a line of fire move over 100 yards roughly sometimes closer sometimes further depending on the uh, scenario light another fire let it burn back to the other one that way you don't ever let the fire get too hot try to keep things from getting out of control despite all preparations the fire has jumped out on the neighboring pasture right here but no fear Dad shot down here with a hair behind the tractor and circled the fire contained. You'll notice here this pasture was not grazed uh, this year. So the grass, real deep, a lot of fuel, a lot of fuel out here. Uh, but we got it contained, back under control. Let's hope for the best. This is Rocky Mountain. He's our burn supervisor. <laughs> No, I am uh, this on Also, me. Clay County uh, Soil and Water Conservation of the Year. How did the fire get out, Rocky? I don't know. It was a natural occurrence. Natural occurrence? Yes. Did the wind, wind change the wind on it? I don't know what happened. It wasn't real windy. We just came around to check, thought we were all done, and I looked out in this pasture. I said, I don't think that pasture is supposed to have that much orange in it. <laughs> Too much orange Too in it. Too much orange for what we were trying to accomplish. But look, looks like y'all got it under control now. Yes, sir. It's all under control now. We'll, uh... I've been wanting to burn them. I told Daddy last year I wanted to burn that. Yes. He didn't. He didn't want to do it then. Uh, I mean, you see how thick it is. He was thinking, you know, leave it for the for the deer, so they got one thick area in all them pine trees where they can bed and hang out. But yes. man, it's thick as crap in there. Yes. This is what we cut all the fire breaks with. It's a Cat D6C. Got a big offset here behind the back of it. This is, uh, if you don't know a whole lot about uh, old bulldozers, this one's got the hand clutches on it. So uh, while you're driving it, you got to think about nothing but uh, driving bulldozers. Because if you think about anything other than driving bulldozers, this joke is going to be sitting still. Uh, you just about got to be an octopus to drive this son of a gun. Lever, 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 lever. All, all those hand levers. Of course, two of them here in the middle for steering, but you got the gear shifter, you got hand clutches, so you got to pull a clutch before you can pull a gear shift. So... And then of course you got blade tilts and all kinds of stuff so when you're on this machine you have your hands full but this is a d6c so this is one of the most reliable bulldozers ever made this joker's got to fire off it's going to run and it's going to pull till you tell it don't do it one of the one of the better pieces of e equipment cats ever made real reliable it's been on this farm for a long time and i don't look for it to leave anytime soon Thank all y'all for watching. Stay tuned to this channel as uh, we start to pick up sheds. This is our shed finding time of year. I'll post some videos of it. I like to uh, take the kids on the shed hunts, let them find the antlers. We, uh, we pick up a lot of deer antlers every year and these woods are gonna be ripe for the picking now. So as we get into the shed hunting season, I'll make sure to post a, a video or two of us uh, getting here and picking up some of these antlers. We're already finding them on the tractors pr pretty heavy, but uh, looks like it's just about time to start picking them up in the woods. We'll see y'all next time.